All right, y'all. Man, Cam Newton, Pastor Keon Henderson. They sat down, had a conversation for two and a half hours. Towards the latter half of the discussion, they started talking about marriage. They started talking about divorce. I guess they've both gone through divorces. They started talking about relationships. And it gets very, very interesting. And then at a certain point, Cam Newton brings up the fact that he has multiple baby mamas. And he's seeking some counsel from Pastor Keon. Now, I haven't seen this full clip. So this is going to be a completely, you know, authentic reaction to what they're talking about. I have seen bits and pieces of it, but not the whole, you know, not the whole situation. So let's get into it. If you want to follow or if you want to join the next live stream, make sure to follow me on Twitch. The link is down below in the comments or in the description. Um, help me get to a thousand followers on Twitch. I think we're at like 800 and like 20 something. Um, help me get to a thousand followers on Twitch. All right. Let's get to it. As a pastor, as a man of God, you said divorce ain't of God or they give you bylaws for why you can divorce mm -hmm. infidelity, you know, uh, going against your vows, certain things like that. What did you know or what do you know now in marriage that you didn't know in your first marriage? That there is no happiness in marriage. You don't get married to somebody to make you happy. Happiness is an inside job. Mm. It isn't my wife's job to create happiness for me. It's my job to be a happy, content person. And that's my gift to her. Mm. The opposite is true from her as well. Right. Now, she does offer me things like peace in our home. And uh, there are some things that she creates. She's an incredible help me. Like she work hard. She'll say stuff like, all right, what's your dream and how can I help? What do you need me to do? OK. What I will say. Is that sometimes when you see people get divorced, it isn't because either of the people in the relationship was bad. It actually means that one or either of those people were not ready to be married in the first place. Mm. And after the thrill was gone, they both recognized it. Because it ain't always traumatic. Sometimes it's incremental degradation over time where you just don't connect and you don't communicate and right. you don't. And then you both look up and you, you realize you were a stranger. Y'all ignoring, ignoring the signs. Yeah, you're ignoring the signs. You know, so I guarantee you more relationships dissolve over that than infidelity. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And well, not saying that it doesn't happen. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. But the two that I know, the main leading causes of disconnect, infidelity and money issues. Mm -hmm. Right. And understanding that. Kirk Franklin said it best. These things are being weaponized in our society now. Why you ain't married? Why you ain't got a kid? Why you ain't? Why the? I say to that. It's like you got a person that's holding you accountable to a law that was originated in religion, you ain't even religious. So how you going to give me something to follow that you not even follow and don't want to follow? So even deeper, my perspective is, even if a person is in a relationship where infidelity took place, or if they're in a relationship where money issues is on the table, neither one of those is the cause of the divorce. You know what the real- Is he not going to talk about what Cam Newton just said though? Maybe I might have heard that wrong. <clears throat> it sounded like he was like implying that marriage is like an outdated religious quote unquote tradition that isn't necessarily supposed to be up upheld today. Maybe I missed it. Let me go back. Issues. Mm -hmm. Right. And understanding that Kirk Franklin said it best. These things are being weaponized in our society now. Why you ain't married? Why you ain't got a kid? Why you ain't, why the, I say to that, it's like you got a person that's holding you accountable to a law that was originated in religion. You ain't even religious. So how you going to give me something to follow that you not even follow and don't want to follow? So even deeper, my perspective is 
even if a person is in a relationship where infidelity took place or if they're in a relationship where money issues is on the table, neither one of those is the cause of the divorce. You know what the real cause is? What? Distrust. Mm -hmm. We keep talking about symptoms instead of talking about sickness. The infidelity is a, sense, a symptom that made me not trust you because there are a lot of people who have had infidelity in their relationships and they went to counseling and therapy and worked it out. How? Because they got back or are working back to get to trust. See, all relationships work at the speed of trust, not at the speed of money, mm -hmm. the speed of trust. Stephen Covey wrote a book called The Speed of Trust. He said, whenever trust is low, cost is high. And whenever cost is high, it's because trust is low. So whenever you're in a relationship, when trust is low, it costs a lot to be in it. Mm -hmm. Give you an example. You remember when McDonald's had uh, old school coffee, 59, 69, 79 mm -hmm. cents, flimsy cup. You remember the lady got the cup of coffee, spilt the coffee on her lap and burned herself? Now they create something called McCafe. Same coffee, same ingredient. Add a couple of ingredients to it. Don't cost them much more. The cup is more sturdy. Now it has a lid on it. That came out of distrust. Cost went up. You know how much more it costs to produce those cups, yeah. those lids. So, so now distrust is in the equation, the cost of production is high. Well, what happens when the cost of production is high? The cost is passed on to the consumer. Mm -hmm. The manufacturer ain't gonna eat it. So now that 59 cent cup of coffee costs $3, $4, because this trust got passed on. That's what Somebody happens in relationships. Somebody gonna pay for it. How would you counsel this day and age of relationships and marriage? I would say um, in this day and time that we gotta get back to agape love, storge love, eros. We gotta get back to the original uh, context of love and this puppy love internet IG stuff, we got to throw this stuff away because like we got all of these these ideas about what love is. Like you can see it anywhere online right now. If it ain't like this, I don't want it. But you don't even know what it's like outside of the post. So just because you see somebody holding hands don't mean they're in love. They trying to take advantage of an algorithm, bro. <laughs> we're going to hold hands. Y'all going to think we couple goals. Right. You're going to go over to our YouTube page and you're going to watch it. We're going to get advertisement and we're going to eat, but we still sleep in the separate rooms. Mm. Or are we going to be sleeping in the same room wishing we was in separate rooms? Which is sometimes worse than the opposite. Come on now. Okay, so, so this is a game out here, bro. Like, like, we don't know what's real no more. We don't, we don't know who real. We, we don't know what's real. That's why I created Funky Friday. I want to have a platform that's built off of truth. Live in your truth. Don't be embarrassed about it. Mm. Lean in. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about, you know, real situations that can affect people in a positive way, not to condemn me, not to say, Tuh. low vibrational, Tuh. I would never, Tuh. damaged goods, Tuh. Yeah. girl, you better than me, Tuh. I don't care how much money you got, Tuh. it wouldn't be me. <laughs> Rather than saying, okay. Uh, he's still feeling the effects of that interview. <laughs> um, I hear what he's saying. From a vulnerability standpoint, I think we need to have more vulnerable conversations. I mean, hey, the Bible does say to confess our sins to one another, right? But to, to say live in your truth is, I don't know, it's a little bit misleading. Um, what do we, what, 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 what do we know? What the, the truth that we have, any knowledge that we have outside of God was obtained in this world. So we're already operating from a disadvantage. So we can't live our truth. We have to know what the truth is. We have to know who, who the one true source of truth is, which is Jesus Christ, which is God, right? That's how we should be operating. That's how we should be living our life according to the standard of God and how he outlaid it in his book. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. But nobody's perfect. Even Christians, we're not perfect, but we have a perfect example that we're striving after. Teach me about what, the, what are your tactics that you do in your family, in your blended family? How do you find beauty in that? Because mm. I never received any type of critique to a person that I can't look up to. Wow. Can't do that. My pop taught me that. Is that something you can't? Look who, look, look who talking to you. Would you take advice from this person? So how are you going to sit up here and, and, and get mad at what they say if you ain't going to take no advice from them? 
So you can say whatever you want to say. I see you and I'm like, bro, I've always said this about as the man as I grow. It's like, bro, if that person who's teaching me can't relate or empathize with me, I can't. come on, man. It's hard, bro. I can agree with that. You see what I'm saying? I don't agree with that with not one bit because I don't agree with that not one bit. If the person, put it like this. He's saying if he if, if he doesn't look up to that person or if he doesn't respect that person, if that person is not at his level or above, then he's not going to take any advice from that individual. Okay. But what if that person who you don't look up to, who you don't respect, quote unquote, what if that person is giving you truth? What if that person is telling you exactly what you need to hear? but you're blinded by your own pride that you're too puffed up to even recognize it. Think about it like this. They accused Jesus of blasphemy. They literally accused Jesus of blasphemy. This is why it's so important no matter what status we um, obtain here on earth, no matter how much success we have, no matter what type of platform we have, no matter how much power we, we get on earth, we have to maintain a level of humility. We have to stay humble. Because the truth is the truth. If someone's giving you truth and you're too prideful to recognize it because you don't respect that person quote unquote they're not on your level they don't make as much money as you make or more or they haven't experienced the same level of success that you've had or more therefore you don't have the time of day to listen to what they have to say that's a dangerous place to be that's a very prideful place to be that's a heart issue That's the same way the Pharisees were looking at Jesus. They were looking at Jesus like, bro, who is this dude? He's talking about all this type of stuff, talking about he the son of God, bro. That's blasphemous. All their humility went out the window because the Pharisees said, bro, we're the ones who are well studied. We come from the strictest religious, you know, sect like ever. We, we know it all front to back. We know it all. And this dude is not who he says he, he, who he says he is. Therefore it must be blasphemous. They lost all their humility because of what they obtained on earth. They couldn't even recognize the truth right in front of them. So I, I get what he's saying to an extent, but we got to be very careful when we get to that type of, you know, mind mindset. And when we get to that, you know, heart, heart posture, once we obtain success, we have to be very careful to make sure that we maintain a level of humility. It's like, dog, like, man, I don't want no fake church. Man, pastor, man, a girl DM me and my lust took over. I know I hurt my girl. Mm. Man, bro, pastor, I got an opportunity where I got so desperate and I put my kids' trust fund in jeopardy because my greed. Hey, pastor, why am I feeling like alone, but I'm successful? Hey, pa these are real things that we need to start normalizing. You see what I'm saying? It ain't no, oh, what would Jesus do type of chat. That don't move me. You may move somebody else and uh, that ain't me. I want to normalize truth. And let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it funky because you don't. What's, what's the two words you said for the two reactions? Baby. Cancer. Cancer. It ain't no right way to tell me that I got cancer. You just got to say you, it. You got to say it. And my job as a spiritual practitioner is to be able to give bedside manners to the people who need to hear me say, what would Jesus do? and flip the script and come right in your room and tell you, hey bro, you had a, a situation where, if I hear you correctly, you're saying your lust took over. 
man, and I hurt my girl. Hey, man, go to her and let her know that your lust never replaces your love and that you recognize that you got an issue with this and that you're going to do whatever you can to make sure that you don't bite the apple, make sure that you don't fall to whatever mm -hmm. it was and let her know, if at all possible, what she might not be doing that left you with an appetite. Let's just keep it Come on. above and keep it 100. And, and, but you can't blame her. Right. But you got to let her know what state of mind you're in. See, because I think that this is the problem with relationships. We don't tell the truth until somebody hurt. Mm. One of the things that me and my wife have made up in our mind, like, bro, on Monday, we're going to tell the truth. On Tuesday, we're going to tell the truth. On Wednesday, we're going to tell the truth. Because I'm not going to hold in the very information that's going to cause us to run this car off the road. If we're going to have an accident, let's crash now. Mm -hmm. If we're going to eventually run into something, let's crash now. So the truth, as you said earlier, will make you free. Mm -hmm. So, so honest conversations, honest conversations. And, and here's the other thing, bro. This is what I learned. This is what I learned. In relationships, a lot of times we think we're informing our spouse about something they already know about us. Let me tell you something. Not only did you see the chick that was bad, your girl saw it before you did. Mm. And she know what you like. And she thinking, oh, he, he acting like he don't see it. <laughs> she thinking ahead, I might as well go over there and tell him, Cam, look now, bro, before you break your neck. Because I've mm. seen her and I know you want to look. And then after you finish looking, can you make me know that that was just a glance, but I'm really who you want? See, if y'all ain't having those kind of conversations, mm. if you ain't keeping it real like that, if you don't know what she's okay with, and what, then what you're doing is you're getting to know a relationship, but you're not getting to know the person. Come on, man. I don't need to know nothing else about relationships. I need to know the person I'm in relationship with. Got to study your partner. You got to train her as she trained you. Yeah. The hard words. People, Some don't, like, train. people don't like that, bro. Train, but it's devotion. It's study it's locking in on life so what, what does train mean like define that for your so, listeners so train for me is help me understand you and, and i hate to use the comparable of animals but that's in essence indirectly what i'm saying here mm -hmm. when you're trying to train a dog to sit you give it the treats to get this undivided attention uh -uh -uh. hey sit not saying that as a man i'm a dog as a, as a female, she's a dog. I'm saying, when you study your partner, you're gonna understand triggers. You're gonna understand body language. You're gonna understand movement. You're gonna understand okay. uh, um, different characteristics that, oh, she happy. Oh, she like this. Oh, she, okay, my girl like ice cream. Oh, let me go on a, boom. Okay, my girl don't like when I use these type of words. My girl don't like when I look at other women. My girl don't like when I insinuate certain things. That's you understanding your partner. That's you being trained by saying, and the great relationships, have a vessel of communication that you don't have to wonder. I'm going to tell you. Baby, I don't like when you do this. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you how it made me feel. See, this is the thing about me, Pastor. God got a very funny sense of humor because I done met a lot of right girls at the wrong time. <sighs> and I just got this visual of God looking down and saying, ha ha, nah, you ain't deserve her, bro. Or you thought you was the catch, but she really was. Wow. And the mature me know that. I know a lot of girls got away. Oh, my God. But the one I got now, I know I did wrong by some, some people. And I only can say it's sad, but the only thing that I can say is, baby, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. Mm -hmm. You see, and understanding that I'm flawed. I ain't coming to you, pastor, counselor, teacher, homeboy, homegirl, friend. I ain't coming to you to judge me. I'm coming to you as a vulnerable soul to say, like, listen, bro, this is really what happened. Baby, look. I messed up. No, 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 I ain't, I ain't do that. But I, I just wish I was, though. I'm triggered. See, being in my realm, I learn way more being in the world than in church. Because in my eyes, church was fake to me. Mm. I couldn't really have no real conversations about how we supposed to compartmentalize our emotions. What do we do? When we are tempted, when we are, it's in our face. It's like, yo, here goes some weed, here goes some drink, here goes some girls, here goes some money, here goes some cars, here go. Like, what, what, what are we supposed to do? But if that pastor, if that, if, if that person that's supposed to be counseling me can't understand, like, bro, it's hard, bro. You, I can't just say no. It ain't no no. Like, man, come on, bro. Like, it's a no. Yeah, but I mean, you gotta, you gotta understand the separation. The church, which is largely a human made organization, right? 
And when I say human made, what I mean is like there's humans who are employed, who are operating, who are running the church. Now they're supposed to be running the church under the guidance of God, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But these are still flawed individuals who are operating these organizations. So there's a difference between the church and then having a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. The one who has been tempted in all the same ways that we have been tempted, that we have been tempted. The one who has overcome every temptation, every sin. He can relate with you. He can emphasize, he can give you that wisdom, that discernment, that guidance, that personal touch that you're looking for. That's found in Jesus Christ. I think that's what he's missing. Because a lot of people have church hurt. A lot of people feel like they can't relate to the church or they can't relate to their pastor. Their pastor. <laughs> their pastor. But bruh, you can't tell me you can't relate to Jesus Christ. Because that would just be a lie. So my question would be, have you sought Jesus Christ? Have you genuinely repented? Have you genuinely went to Jesus Christ and asked for forgiveness and confessed your sins to him and waited for his response on how to move forward? Have you genuinely given that a shot? That would be my question. Because that's what it sounds like is missing in this equation. You ain't, have you been in these shoes? These size 14s? <laughs> Bro, it's heavy. And I had that conversation with my mom. She does this maid program. Mothers and daughters. And it's, it's one of them situations where I'm like, man, mom, this person that's on OnlyFans, she needs you. Don't judge her. You got, a, you got a vulnerable soul that you can either crush or you can flourish. And you can teach that person. People come to church for a place of refuge. You know what I'm saying? It, it, ain't, it ain't on no... I know I'm messed up. And you don't need to come and hear me for an hour tell you that you are. But I think there's two things that's happening. Because on the merit, I agree. I agree. The girl on OnlyFans needs the missionary but it's a girl in the choir that ain't on OnlyFans, but she's doing OnlyFans stuff. So the girl that's on the platform ain't worse than the girl that's in the Come choir. On. So what am I supposed to do as the man of God or the woman of God, like me and your mom do this for a living? Well, yes, you are supposed to be able to come and tell me about what you got going on. Ain't that what the woman at the well did mm -hmm. when she was with Jesus? And she says, Jews ain't supposed to be talking to Samarians. And Jesus says, I know. And by the way, since we're talking, you just had five husbands Come on. and the one you with, that ain't your husband. So he already knows. N number one, we ain't got to tell God nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the problem that we think that because we don't admit it, he don't know. God already knows. But it is also the job of the minister or the pastor to say to you or me, let me use me for an example, not you, to mm -hmm. say to us the same way a doctor would. Hey, if you don't stop smoking, it's going to kill you. Mm. If you don't stop drinking, your liver going to shut down. I can't hold back the bad news because you're going to be offended. I got to tell you what activity you are in that will lead, as the scripture says, in therein leads to death. Mm -hmm. So I can't be your homie at the expense of being your leader. Come on, man. But I can be your leader and you respect me as a homie because if I gain that respect as your guy, right. I should also be able to tell you about God. I think the sweet spot is in the middle, that you trust me enough to tell you what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And I got enough respect and honor for you as a human being to know that you are a person in the making. We are human beings, not human becames. Mm. We are being, like we are being every day. That's a good point. I wanna be respectful of your time. There's some things that I, I, I would like to kind of cover. How do you overcome the fear of a failed marriage? One day at a time, bro. A lot of crying. <laughs> now maybe, I guess the artist, if you're expecting to say Psalms 3, no. Therapy. Crying, baseball bats against garbage cans, mm. screaming and cussing in the car, why me? Uh, hiding in the room with the curtains closed so nobody could see you. That's the beginning. 
truthfully, if you're human, and then you start to get your swag back, mm -hmm. you've got to find a purpose higher than your failure. You get over a failed marriage the way you get over the failed um, parenting moment. You get over a failed marriage, the, the, you, just, you just live through it. You live through it. Time is undefeated. Will Smith said this so perfectly in his song, all storms run out of rain. And if you can just hold on, weeping may endure for night joy comes in the morning. Like the first part of survival, like you don't got to do nothing right away. Just make it, right. just make it. But make sure that after you make it, that you don't take that trauma to the next person. Mm. Because now you're going to have a new person paying for old baggage. Let me tell you something. It's like a fishing net. Like when a fishing net comes out of the water, it's got to be dried off. All of the debris has to be taken off of it. The mollusks have to be taken off of it because all of that disintegrates the cord. And it's the same way with life. Yeah. Once you come out of that storm, out of that water, you got to give yourself some time to dry. Because if you rot, you become an unreliable person. Mm. And you will break at a moment where somebody's relying on you. You will break under the weight. You got to heal. Then after you heal, you got to have copious amounts of conversations. My wife and I, our first conversation about being together lasted six hours and it was full of I don't want and I ain't going to have and you better. It was so toxic mm -hmm. and good at the same time because we were both like, we ain't never getting married again. I was ready to ride this thing out single till the Lord called me home. I was like, I ain't doing it no more. I ain't doing it no more. I didn't trust people. I didn't trust relationships. And can I be honest? I ain't trust me. Mm. I ain't trust me not to bleed on her and to make her pay for stuff that I thought was somebody else's fault until I got the right help. So you just got to live. You got to air dry. You got to deal with the trauma. And lastly, you got to get to the place where you want the person that you are no longer with to succeed. And the moment you start pulling for the person who hurt you, you know you made it. Because forgiveness is remembering the incident without crying because of the pain. Mm. Like, you hurt me, I hurt you, whatever it is. I want you to be good. Like, I want you to be good. And I don't need karma to teach you a lesson so I can feel better about your demise. I want you to be good. Once you get there, you know you've moved on. But I, I'm not even going to act like I don't know because I do know who your wife is. And so... I want to say this real quick, because I think his original question, Cam's original question was something along the lines of how do you get over the fear of failure in a marriage? Something like that. Um, and that, let, let me just say this, because Cam is asking the question, and this is a very successful individual, multi, multi-millionaire. And I don't know his exact situation. So let me not even talk specifically about Cam, but let me just talk about successful people in general in reference to the question that he asked. Because here's what I think. I think when you have success, when you have experienced being broke, not having, and then you have an abundance of resources, of finances, of money, of, of assets. When you have this power associated with the number in your bank account and this comfort that it gives you, I think you build an unhealthy relationship with your success and you build an unhealthy relationship and dependence with your finances. So you're always on guard from that standpoint. You're always on guard to protect yourself from potentially losing a portion of your wealth because so much of your value, so much of your comfort is tied up in how much money you have in your account. And so when you look at marriage, marriage presents a risk that you could potentially lose some of what you've worked so hard to obtain here on earth. So when you talk about the fear of divorce, I think one of the reasons that successful people, individuals who make a lot of money and whatnot, who have a lot of you know assets and resources and stuff like that, 
I think one of the fears is the potential of that not working out and then you losing a portion of that quote unquote treasure that you've obtained here on earth. That's what I think. Because most people, most successful people, what do they do before they enter into a marriage? Most of the time, if they have the proper representation, they enter into a prenup before they get married. Why? In order to protect their assets in the event of potential loss from divorce. So I think there's a lot tied up in that. And ultimately, I think it's a matter of your heart. And I think it's a matter of what do you truly worship, the money or God? Are you idolizing your success? Are you idolizing the treasure that you've obtained here on earth that ultimately you can't take with you? Or are you worshiping and are you serving God and trusting God to lead you in this marriage, to protect your marriage, to strengthen your marriage, to repair your marriage? What are you trusting in? That's what I would say. There was so much gossip still to this day in regards to how it happened. Mm. So for me, I would like, like, how did it happen? In, in your realm where you got to be close knit, you got to be very polished. Yeah. Especially as a man that has a lot of influence, followers, and I'm not talking about social media. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How does, how does that happen? And how did you know, oh, that's, that's the one? Yeah, so how it happened was we were introduced by a mutual friend. Okay. Right? You know, so somebody told us that we would be good for it. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't even get to the part. Okay, let me skip to the part because he, Cam asked a question about his personal situation. I wanted to hear the answer to it about him having multiple baby mamas and stuff like that. So 224. So let me skip to 224 because I don't think I can sit here for 14 minutes. No disrespect, but y'all can go watch the full interview on uh, Cam's channel, 224. Mm. Let's go right here. Talk about, you was, you was gonna say something. No, I just said I hate it for them. Yeah. Cause you know, they didn't ask to be. That. Yeah. But when you talk about, going back to your new book, Lazy Love, right? I have eight kids three different baby mothers. Mm -hmm. What is your response to my situation? I mean, I just recently went viral <laughs> because I've been public about the fear of divorce, right? Mm -hmm. When you hear that, when you see that, um, what's your take on it? I don't have no judgment because first of all, you, three less than my daddy, he got, <laughs> <laughs> he had five and three. What, what, what I'm gonna say, yeah. none of the kids can be unborn, right? People make love, they don't make children. So if God didn't want them children to be here, they wouldn't be no matter what you did. Mm -hmm. They have a purpose. So what I would say is congratulations on being open about the fact that you have them. I want to say, secondly, I want to thank you for fathering those children and not just having them in the world. Yes, sir. Thank you for recognizing them because you don't want them to be like me living 12 years before they find out who they come from. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing those children a favor of letting them know from day one that they can trace their source back to a man. Secondly, I would say, man, be careful going forward because, man, child support is a beast, bro. Mm. I just would just say... Yeah, do what you can, bro. <laughs> Pray for it, bro. I'm praying for it. It's expensive, bro. <laughs> Lord Jesus. But no, nah, dog, like, I, man, I think that take was not yours, but just in general, um, and just keep it above, uh, Dr. Bryant. It was a take that she didn't know my situation. You know what I'm saying? I have unbelievable relationships with every single woman that I share a child with. Yeah. And I think it's important for the children to see like you said, those are, they need to see that their parents still. I mean, that's, listen, I agree. You can't change the past. The children have a purpose. And it's, a, it's amazing that he is in their lives, supporting them. It's amazing that he still has a positive relationship with his baby mamas. 
I think that the thing is like, okay, now where do we go from here? What is the perspective moving forward? And that's the thing that I was, you know, talking about in my last video where we reacted to the video of him with uh, Dr. Uh, Bryant is like, cause he was talking about wanting more kids, but I'm like, you're talking about wanting more kids, but then you're very noncommittal from the standpoint of, uh, of if you even want to get married, but you're very stern on the fact that you want more kids, but you're back and forth as to whether you want to get married or not. So it's like, are we just going to continue to go down the same path? Or are we going to look at the situation and look at the mistakes that we made in the past? And I'm talking to myself too, because, you know, I've made a similar, I don't want to call, you know, my daughter a mistake. She's not a mistake, but the mistake from the standpoint of, I didn't really understand how important and critical it is to build with one woman. Well, I did, I did understand it, but I wasn't operating and living as if I truly respected how important and critical it is to build a foundation, build a family unit and not create a broken home and not create a blended family. I didn't understand how important it was. I wasn't respecting how important it was and my actions showed that. So that was my thing. I was just like, bro, I, what are we, what are we going to do moving forward? Like it's dope that you're holding it down, that you're supporting them, that they live with you, all that type of stuff. But moving forward, what does that kind of look like? And what is your thought process as you enter into other relationships and as you have more children? Like what, what are we kind of thinking here? That's, that's just what I'm thinking. Respect each other. Absolutely. There you go, acting like your daddy again. And like as two, and I, I don't know, I still, I don't really know what Cam Newton believes from a faith standpoint. Not trying to be disrespectful. I just, I don't know what he really believes from a faith standpoint. It's clear that he's had some church hurt. It's clear that he has a background in the church. Like he grew up, he grew up in some capacity in the church. His mom is still serving in the church um at a at a leadership level it, sound, it sounds like but i don't know what type of personal faith he has but just assuming that these are two christian men having a conversation i mean i i, I let's see what pastor keon says but you know i'm 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 looking for a little bit more uh a little bit more wisdom not just be careful for child support. I mean, that's that's the obvious, but from like a spiritual standpoint, what's up? You know what I mean? I don't know, let's see what he says. What's going on over here, boy? Man, you, you know what, your, your, your mama, you act, at, you know, it's just, it's not healthy. Do you know when people speak bad about the parent that they've had a child with, they do themselves a disservice? Mm. Because it's amazing that when we speak bad about the child telling them who their father is, you know what the children are thinking? Or at least what I thought? Well, couldn't have been that bad. You chose him more than once. So you speak about your own choices when you demean another person. I think you just need to leave that alone. Right. Stop trying to make the children have an alliance to one parent right. and disassociating them from another, unless that parent is abusive and, right. and debaucherous. If that person is going to harm the child, yeah, yeah, then absolutely yeah. not. But if you're a good father, one thing a woman should know and a man should know, I can't beat a woman being a mother. And a woman can't beat me being a father. Mm -hmm. So if I have an opportunity to be in my child's life, even if you don't like me for that child's sake, give me an opportunity to be there. Yes, sir. So that they don't repeat the cycle that we're in right now. Absolutely. Man, last thing for me, bro, and this come from just the curiosity of like understanding the different phases of church, understanding what church is actually like. Um, the incident arose of a, of a clip where you... I wish he would have spoke more about that situation with Cam Newton. I mean, I'm I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have spoke more about it in private because they seem like they have, you know, they seem like they're friends. Um, but I mean, Cam knew he Cam brought it up publicly. I was I was thinking that, you know, we were going to get a little bit more. 
a little bit more of a response. Um, you know, and I'll say this because it sounds like Cam Newton is a is a is a good father. It sounds like he's a really good father. That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like, right? It sounds like he's a really good father. I would say, yo, Cam, let's 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 piece this all together. You're a good father. Now show your children an example of a good husband. And let's piece it all together. Because we don't want to continue down this path. I, de I don't want my children to have to go through the same things that, you know, I went through and I ultimately put them through. So let's show them an example. I'm speaking for myself too. I don't know. I was expecting a little bit more of a response there. Let me know what you think. Get in my comments, like this video. If you have something to say, go ahead and say it in the comments. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm trying to say. All right. All right, y'all. I got I got I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm out, y'all.